I got you. All right. I have you. You have us. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, thanks for having me. Always. All right. We um, are going to go ahead and poll for questions. If you have a question for AJ, please raise your hand within the Zoom platform or send us a chat. And to kick us off, we're going to go to Jacob Seelman. Go ahead, Jacob, with your question for AJ. Thanks, Amanda. AJ, thanks for taking the time this morning. Uh, how big an opportunity is this? Obviously, we know you guys circle the road courses, but how big is this in terms of you know potentially locking yourselves into the playoffs early and, and really being able to push forward and, and try to give yourselves a, a buffer to kind of plan for some things in the playoffs if you can win this weekend? Yeah, Jacob, I mean, it's, it's an important race, but every race is important. And, you know, last year at the Daytona road course, we, we probably should have, we were, we were about a third place car, but we were definitely way off of, of the 22 and the 98, uh, you know, Austin Sindrick and, and team Penske right now. I mean, they're, they're the reason that there's a reason that the champs and, you know, we got to go out there and keep stepping our game up at college racing to try to get to them. So we've done a lot of work. Uh, on sim and everything once we saw this race was put on the schedule to uh to try to get closer we were as i said a good bit off so more than anything i'm looking forward to to seeing all the work that we put in how much gains that we've made and you know if that gives us an opportunity to go out there and win the race then that'd be awesome and if not then we just got to focus on trying to get as many points as possible so uh yeah the ultimate goal is always to try to win the race but we got to see where we're at early in the race on, on speed. And then from there on out, play the race out and try to make no mistakes and do the best that we can, you know, and, and that's always the focus. Every race is uh, if we can't win, get the best finish possible. So I'm proud of, of all the effort that all the men and women at college racing have, have put into uh, the start of the season. We had a solid start at, at Daytona finishing in the top five and, and Jeb finishing fourth. Unfortunately, Justin got caught up in that wreck, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this weekend and, and hopefully uh, all the work that we put in, we can make gains on that 22 for sure. Just to follow up, uh, when you look at the Daytona road course, you've probably got as much, if not more experience than any other driver in the field on it with all your Rolex experience. Does anything from the sports car and running the course translate over to the stock car? Is there anything at all that you, you pull from that experience when you get in the Xfinity car and go, or is it really just two totally different animals? Yeah, there's little nuances uh, from the racetrack of, of all the time that I've spent on it that I, I feel like can help me out. Uh, but at the end of the day, the cars are so different. Uh, I was shocked last year, quite honestly, just how little grip there was. Uh, I know Goodyear, I, I feel like they're bringing a different tire back than what we raced on. So that might be, that changed it a little bit. But just watching uh, the Bush Clash, I mean, it, it you can see in the in car outside the race cars i mean it's tough to put power down and and have any type of grip so it's a lot different than even the gt car when i drove it the last few years for Meyer shank racing uh and especially a lot different than the dpi car so but yeah I, I think there's little things that i know about the racetrack that may help me but uh i mean it's it's quite different for sure okay our next question is question is going to come from Nate Ryan. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, AJ, I uh, wanted to ask you about the uh, changes that they've made to the, uh, I guess, the bus stop there. Um, you know, what, what you know about them, I understand that they did this after consulting drivers where you consulted and just like what your impressions are of that, those uh, chicane changes they made. Uh, I wasn't uh, consulted, Nate, but, you know, just looking at some of the pictures that have come out, I haven't seen kind of the, the finished product. It may not even be finished yet. I don't know, but uh, you know, it was it was strange because last year in the Xfinity race, I didn't feel like the chicane, at least dirt wise, was a big deal. Uh, I know because it had rained so much at that point, you know, Justin Haley and uh, I believe the two cars well had some issues that when they got off the racetrack, it did a lot of damage. Uh, but I, yeah, I was actually quite surprised how much dirt was on the racetrack during the, the clash, because I didn't remember that even in the cup race last year being that big of an issue. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because it had rained so much during the summer at that point that everybody was afraid to even drop a wheel and, and doing damage to the race car. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's something that we'll have to all figure out 
it'll definitely probably slow the bus stop down a little bit, knowing that you can't get in too deep and run across the the turtles or, or whatever that they put in there. Uh, but, you know, it'd be the same for all of us. So I don't see it being that big of an issue. As a Rolex 24 veteran, uh, maybe and I'm a, a traditionalist, do you, do you think they need to make the change or do you like that they kind of tweaked it? Um, given that, you know, you have so much experience on the way that course normally sort of lays out. I know it's not a big change, but. Yeah. I mean, I, I if the race was going to play out the way the clash did, yeah, I feel like it, it needed a change just because everybody was running through there. I mean, it was, I mean, it looked like an ice rink. I mean, just watching the, the 19, especially at the end leading the race and didn't, re, didn't even seem like he made a mistake. It just, he got a little bit free in there and, and touched the throttle and, and that was it. So uh, you know, it's easy to say, well, we shouldn't be running off the racetrack, but at that point, you, if you can hang a wheel in the dirt and gain a little bit of time, just because you're shortening the racetrack or you're helping the car turn, we're all going to do it. So if that's the simple answer of, we got to put things down to make sure that we don't be running off the racetrack like that. And, and, uh, then we have to do it. I mean, I, I, I've seen people comment, well, you know, why can every other race car there, get, you know, not run through the dirt. Well, it's a, a stock car is a different animal. You can get away with it at times. You can't do that in a prototype or a GT car and, and get away with it. So, uh, I mean, the changes were probably needed after watching the clash. So I, I'm on board with it. Great. Thanks, AJ. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Next question is going to come from Jenna Farrar. Go ahead, Jenna. Hey, AJ. How big of a deal was it for colleague to make the 500? Uh, hey, Jenna, I, I mean, it was huge on, on the, uh, for this weekend, because if we didn't make the 500, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have been racing. Uh, but for many reasons, it was, it was huge, you know, to get Hyper Ice, which was a brand new sponsor of the car in the field was a big deal. You know, to have Kaz make his first 500 was, was really big. I was, uh, it kind of made me smile because I was standing next to Kaz at driver intros by the car and it's, you know, I think as veterans sometimes we lose a little bit of, of sight of like how big the 500 is when you're just standing there and to see somebody that had made his first 500, just like his eyes like light up, like, oh my God, like this is the Daytona 500. Uh, it made me feel good because it brought me back to the first time I made the 500. So it was big for him. And I mean, it's one of the biggest races in the world. So to not be in it when you're trying to attempt it, uh, it hurts you and it hurts morale. It hurts sponsorship. It hurts everything that goes along with it. And plus we wouldn't have been racing this weekend. So I thought it was huge just to be in the field and, and have that happen. And fortunate with the issue that we had during the race, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a big deal for so many different reasons, Jenna. And uh, since you are in the field this week and typically they send you out there to trophy hunt and you are a good road course racer, are you expected to go get the trophy this week? No, this is a different animal. Um, you know, I appreciate everybody like putting me on the forefront of like, oh, you know, me and Chase Elliott and Truex and Kyle, but you know, on down the line, but we're a brand new team. I mean, what, this is the third cup race ever for college racing and definitely the first on a, on a road course. Uh, you know, we're starting at the back, which, you know, it's a long race. So starting position isn't going to be a huge deal, but you know, I mean, I, I go with the the uh, the outlook. If we can run inside the top fit, 15, top 10, especially, and finish there, that'd be a great day. And then anything else would be spectacular. Of course, I mean, we want to win the race. Like, we, we you don't show up not wanting to, to be in contention to win, but we got to be realistic. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if the car's good, we've done our homework, we've, we've put effort into it. It's not like we're just showing up and, and throwing the car on the racetrack. We've done a lot of sim work with it. Uh, I feel good about where we're at, but I mean, it's we're racing against the best of the best. And, and to be inside, I, I would love to be inside the top 10. That would be a solid day for us. Your tremendous skill won't push you to the checkers? I mean, I'd like to, to say that, but you know, the, the other drivers, they're kind of good in the field. It's not like they're weak road course racers. So, uh, but you know, I mean, it's, Hey, don't get me wrong. If we got if, if we have a shot to win, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn it down by any means. And I'm going to do everything that we can to, to go win the race, but got to be realistic at first. Thanks AJ. Thank you.
Okay, our next question is going to come from Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Thanks, Amanda. Hey, AJ, hope you're doing well. That was kind of my question, but I'll ask you this. Uh, you know, you know the car better than I do. Um, doing some practice on iRacing yesterday uh, with those deep, deeper turtles, whether it be the bus stop or the chicane, depending on where a driver hits it, could it do some uh, damage to the steering of the car, like in the s suspension or not really? Hey, Marty, yeah. I mean, it's it, – the turtles, I mean, they're – they're there for a reason. I mean, it, it's it's going to definitely hurt the race car going across them, um, depending on the angle that you hit them at, the speed that you hit them at. But, yeah, I mean, it definitely can can do some damage to the car. So uh, you got to look at it, you know, like there's a wall there. Like, I mean, if you, if you get in too deep and, and you make a mistake, you're going to pay the price, which, you know, to me is the way it should be at times. Uh, you go in there and, and you make a mistake. I mean, there, there should be consequences to that. So – uh, I hope I'm not one of them that, that makes that mistake, but I mean, there, there's potential that if you do, that it can definitely damage the car or, or take you out of the race. All right, cool. Thank you, AJ. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Chase Holden. Go ahead, Chase. Hey, what's up, AJ? Uh, question from the Garage fam this morning. I've got a guy named Andrew. He wants to know, how much of an advantage is it to be able to race in the Xfinity Series the day before your return to Cup, and how does the Xfinity car compare to the Cup car on a road course? Hey, Chase. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Uh, I think running laps never hurts. And, like, that's something that will definitely help me at least be in the flow of the racetrack. Uh, I think the guys that – the drivers that ran the clash probably have the most advantage over the whole field because they were in the cup car with the low downforce package. They kind of know what to expect. Uh, so that that'll help them the most. But for sure, running that race – on Saturday will get me in the flow getting into Sunday. But I mean, I haven't been in a cup car in, in nearly three years. They've changed a lot. So I don't know truly what to expect of, of with this low downforce package of how it really feels compared to the Xfinity car. I can tell you these Xfinity cars, they don't have hardly any downforce on them, whether it's the oval or the road course. So they are tough to drive. Uh, but, you know, watching, the Bush Clash, it was, I mean, the cup cars looked like they were on edge and, and brakes were an issue. So I think the teams will be kind of have a better idea about what to expect with that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't truly know how close these cars are going to be. I could say they're definitely going to be a lot closer than if I were to run the Xfinity race last year in the cup race with that high downforce package. So they'll, they'll at least be closer now this year. But, uh, I, you know, those first few laps will be, kind of getting the flow of it and, and trying to understand what this car feels like. Thanks for your time, AJ. Thanks, man. Okay, we're going to take our final question from Ashley McCubbin. Go ahead, Ashley. Building on the discussions of the fact the track is slick and the turtles, what do you feel is the biggest challenge when it comes to the Daytona Road Course? Well, thanks, Ashley. I think it's just uh, it's lack of grip. You know, that was something last year in the Xfinity race I was shocked by. Like, it was slick. And watching the clash, it doesn't look like there's much more grip out there. You can definitely tell from the in-car cams and, and just watching the race. I mean, you got to be easy on the throttle. It's easy to lock the brakes up, first of all. So if you lock, you lock a tire up, I mean, you're, you're going to have to pit most likely. Uh, it's easy to be aggressive on the throttle and burn the rear tires up really quick. Uh, and, and especially into the bus stop now with the turtles. It's easy to make a mistake and pay the price. And then it's easy in the final chicane to get in too deep. And we saw uh, contact. If you're side by side, you're going to probably make contact. And if you get in too deep, you're probably going to run through the chicane and have to do a stop and go on the front straightaway. So it's just lack of grip overall. And if you're deep in the field, it's, I think it's going to be easy, especially where we start. Even if the car is really good and I can – start moving up through the field to, to overuse the car early in the race. So uh, it, it's, I think Coda maybe something like that where it's lack of grip, but comparing it to the other road courses that are on the schedule, I would say it's probably like Sonoma where it's just so easy to use the, the tires and brakes up so early in a, in a run and pay the price at the end of it. Uh, so that's something that early on, A, trying to get used to the car and, and what it feels like. And, and then on top of it, 
uh, just know how early, how easy I have to be to have some tire at the end of the run will be a, a big deal. And then having been involved in the sport for a long time, how encouraging is it to see different people investing in the sport, whether they be superstars from other sports or international singers per se? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a huge deal. It, it was, there was a, a time over the last couple of years where there wasn't a lot of new sponsors coming into the sport. Sponsors were leaving. We didn't have a lot of new team owners, whether they were superstars or, or just, you know, people that wanted to invest. It was, it, I don't want to say it was looking bleak, but it was definitely concerning. So to have people like Matt Collig that, you know, really five years ago, didn't know much about racing and, and wasn't involved in it, didn't have any interest in it. And now to see we have three full-time Xfinity cars, we're running the cup race. Uh, he's talking about in 22, wanting to move this team into the cup series full-time uh, and invest his money and time. That's a huge deal. And then you have people like Michael Jordan and Pitbull. And, you know, we saw Alvin Kamara now is, is uh, being a part of it. Uh, new companies like Hyper Ice that are, on the car for Kaz Barella and on my car this weekend. That is a huge deal for NASCAR racing and it's much needed. So uh, I'm excited to, to still be a, be a part of the sport and watch the growth. So, you know, that's part of the reason why I came back full-time racing was to be back with a, an organization like College Racing and Matt Collig, Chris Rice, all the men and women at College Racing to see the growth of the team and just to be a small part of that, that's really, like, I love driving, but being a part of the growth of college racing has excited me and, and made me want to be a part of the sport even more. So to have that interest from all aspects uh, of life, really, whether it's a, a Matt Colleague, a Michael Jordan, you know, Pitbull, so on, that's huge for NASCAR. So hopefully we can keep this going. Thank you. And best of luck this weekend. And thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, AJ, for spending time with us um, this morning and best of luck this weekend at the Daytona Road Course. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you all.